All right, Swanee, and we are underway as the ball is kicked out of the end zone and beyond the field of play. Checking the offensive front for the UCLA Bruins as we get ready for this ball game. It's a, a group that's very steady and led by big number 71, Chris Ferris, a guard. The wide receivers are, are big people on this football team. They're tall. They fight for the ball. Paulie Dixon, 6'5", Farmer, 6'4". The backs you know about the quarterback. The tailback is by committee. Three of them, Lewis, Brown, and true freshman, Deshaun Foster. Wisconsin defense will be tested early on because it's uh, it's up to the uh, UCLA offense to get as many snaps as they can as Bob said and keep that defense off the field until they can gain some confidence. Now, this defensive unit is one of the best in the country and they will come at you from all sides. Tom Burke is not in the first series for Wisconsin because he's being disciplined for a minor infraction before they left home. Jake Sprague was the man who made the start at that defensive end position. Gabe McNown's pass to the outside is across the 30, and that's good for the first down. The linebackers for the Wisconsin Badgers are Chris Godorzi and Donnell Thompson. They both have over 100 tackles. Bob Adamoff is a walk-on captain. The defensive secondary, this is where it gets interesting. Mike Eccles and Jamar Fletcher are redshirt freshmen. They're not as big as those UCLA receivers. The two safeties in the middle are going to have to help them out today, and they are fully capable. It's by UCLA, go to the wide receivers on those redshirt freshman corners. Jermaine Lewis is number 23. He's only 5'7", 180 pounds out of Lancaster, California. He's hard to find, however, when he gets ducked in behind that offensive line. Freddie Mitchell has shown up on the field. He's the young man who had the great quarter against Texas, broke a femur bone in his leg and is recovered now, and he is at full speed and anxious to show his wares that he's plenty good. But this is Deshaun Foster, who is a freshman out of Santa Ana, California, who led the ball club in rushing, and he's got star written all over him. So we're underway in the 85th Rose Bowl game. Let's look at UCLA offensively in the Pac-10. They lead in scoring and total offense. They're pretty good at running the football also. They've had five games where they've rushed for over 200 yards, so it's just not a one-dimensional offensive team. And Tom Burke, the All-American at defensive end for Wisconsin, is now in the ball game on third down and short. Cade McNown keeps it, punches in over the guard spot, and he looks like he's got his first down. Yeah, I think Tom Burke, Keith, missed the first two plays of the game, and then he was right back in the, in the mix. The referees today, the officials today, are out of the Big 12 Conference. The referee is John Lurie. This defense for Wisconsin is containing. They play a lot of deep uh, coverage. No big plays. UCLA wants to score some points. McNown back, has plenty of time, drills it. And the pass is caught up at midfield by Brian Foley Dixon. That is his second reception, and he caught it right in front of Mike Eccles. Cade McNown has uh, been a starter for four years. He is the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year this season. And uh, what more can you say about him? I think Keith, he, he's not gotten the exposure on the East Coast as he has on the West Coast. And uh, he hasn't been seen. Anymore. He has. And, no. and he, he, all he does is wins football games. He does, the stats are not that great, but he doesn't. Uh, he, they haven't been in that many good games, but he wins ball games. Ball is thrown short. Caught by Ryan Neufeld, uh, the number 40 tight end. And uh, the gain is enough for the first down. So in, in the case of McNown on the UCLA offense, in perspective, they're sort of nickel and diming their way down the field right now. Well, they're taking what's there, Keith, and what's there is man coverage in the secondary and a lot of single coverage. The corners on the outside, Lynn had talked about the red shirt freshman going against these two big play guys on the outside. No surprises, single coverage, and that's what Cade's doing, throwing the ball to him. Four out of four, 26 yards, Foster with the ball. No room there. Penalty flag goes down. So 
So something happened a little bit late to cause that flag to come out of the linesman's pocket. Holding, it's against UCLA. And so the Bruins shoot themselves at the foot in this initial possession by picking up a holding call. You look at uh, Wisconsin defensively. This is in the nation. They're the leading scoring uh, defense in the nation. They're third against the run, fifth against uh, total defense. They're in the top six in all four major categories. In looking at the national defensive stats, Bob, you, you match up Wisconsin and Florida State, and you look like you might have to play three days to score. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The other thing that Wisconsin has on their side is they're the, the leading team in the nation in turnover margin uh, ratio. They have a plus 22. They've taken it away 22 more times and given it up. So it's first down and uh, 21. That was an 11 yard holding call. Now, Cade McNown turns it loose a little bit and goes down for an 11 yard pickup and a 21 yard pickup. But there's a flag back there where he threw the ball, and the referee, John Laurie, has thrown it down. And that may come back holding against UCLA. Sing okay, Cade was giving him some business on the call, but single coverage on the outside, and the free safety, Doring, number eight, is in the center of the field helping out late. Cade was doing lobbying as, as strongly as he dared uh, with the referee, but the referee picked up the flag and dropped it a second time, and Cade walked away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there are the numbers and the history on Bob Toledo in his time at UCLA. It's his second turn as a head coach. He was at Pacific, but as you all know, University of Pacific now does not play football. And uh, what Bob, a great, what a great job he's done. Oh, it's wonderful. At UCLA. He fits. Uh, he yeah. fits. You know that? I know, and, he, and he's a people person, and he uh, makes sense. He talks to the players. And uh, those Friday night meetings before a Saturday game uh, are, are really special with him. That was a 17-yard penalty. It'll be first down and 38. They've got to go down to the 33-yard line uh, to get a first down. McNown will let it go, and it's in no man's land. Nobody can get there. You had Brad Melsby trying to cut back and get to the ball, but give Eccles credit, he uh, held him up just enough to mess up the timing on the play. Yeah, there was a true freshman, Bryant, uh, number 77, right up the center. Kalaji is 78, Berg 74, but it's the freshman, Bryant 77, that just pushes the pile right back in uh, Cade's face. So it is second down. 37, 38 yards. And he's still operating up under center. This is the initial offensive series of the ball game. Setting up a screen here to Deshaun Foster. Foster up the sidelines, gets up about the 42-yard line, but it's still a half a mile to go for their first down. The tackle was by Leonard Taylor that time. One of the safeties for Wisconsin coming over to help on the sideline. It's a nice call from behind the offense. Foster is a true freshman, and he has got uh, star quality written all over him. I uh, like the call. Something safe where you're going to pick up some yardage. Good, good chance here, Keith. Just throw the ball straight down the field. You're either going to pick up a first down, maybe an interference, or punt the ball away. Just take it deep. Third and 25. You've got double wide at the bottom. And they're on their way. Rolls out to buy some time. The pass is away down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Brad Melsby. So he did not go to the man who has caught most of the balls off his arm this season. Danny Farmer was over in the middle, and Farmer might have been available. Well, Fletcher, the wide receiver, I mean, the corner on the wide receiver fell down. Take a look right here. Melsby, watch you. He's going to run a little out, stop, and go, and he had him. He just overthrew, overthrew it. it. Now going back is uh, Nick Davis, and I've categorized him as one of my favorites of the season, a true freshman as uh, Saylor. Chris Saylor gets ready to punt. Davis showed up, 5'10", 180 pounds, and Barry was looking for somebody who could field a punt. And this youngster said, Coach, I can catch BBs in the dark. Give me a chance. And he did, and he's been spectacular, and he's going to get a penalty call right there against UCLA for not giving him room to catch the ball. Marcus Anderson was down, hit him too soon, crowded him. He got to give him a couple of yards, six feet. They didn't do it. First down. So 
So we've got a timeout at the Rose Bowl. No score with Wisconsin about to get its first possession. And guess who's deep? Big old Rondane up the middle. He goes. You can't let him get the second foot on the ground. If you do, he'll beat on you like a drum. The AT&T starting on up then across the front for Wisconsin. Few bigger than this group. The tackles Gibson and McIntosh are 370 and 317. The wide receivers, that's a singular subject. Split in Chris Chambers, 11 games. He's only caught 26 balls, but he averages better than 20 yards per catch. The backfield, Wisconsin runs the football. 552 rushes versus 183 passes. Aaron Gibson just running over that defensive lineman that was in front of him on that first play. As you pound ahead, uh, and it's, it's a warm day. It's going to be up into the middle 70s and probably down on the field a little warmer than that. And it's a pickup there of about six, six and a half yards. The defensive front for UCLA is a bit scary here. The veteran is a sophomore, Coleman. The other two are freshmen making their first start. <laughs> in the linebacking position, White and Nice are young. Ian Badejo has a banged up knee, hurts his lateral movement. The secondary was run over by Miami and exercised by most everybody else this season, but then Wisconsin doesn't throw that much. Well, seven of the 11 starters on defense for UCLA are either freshmen or sophomores. Here comes the big guy, Dane, and he's got another first down for the Wisconsin Badgers as he rumbles down to about the 42-yard line. I like to call him the 18-wheeler. <laughs> well, the last time we saw UCLA, or anybody may have seen UCLA, as we watch, that's Gibson, 79, lining up at tight end on the left side, and there's just no match. For him, he's 370 pounds going against the smallest defensive line. Against Miami, Edger and James ran for 299 yards for the Hurricanes against this UCLA defense. Back goes Samuel for one of those infrequent things called a forward pass, and it is incomplete. And Chris Chambers cut it off. He cut off the pattern down the middle, and the ball was overthrown by a good 20 yards. Uh, at least it wasn't caught by anybody. Barry Alvarez in his ninth season at Madison Wisconsin you see his record there he's named the Big Ten coach of the year for the second time it's the second time he's been to the Rose Bowl he's been in five total bowls in those nine years and he's on his way in fact he is right now the winning is coach outside of Fred King who coached at the turn of the century and here's the handoff inside this time to Eddie Faulkner who's in relief of Ron Dane and Faulkner takes a lick from number 50 Ion Badejo. Barry Joe got hurt in that Miami game and he is still not laterally flexible. Yeah, he, if, if there is any leadership on this UCLA defense, I am Badejo and uh, Larry Atkins, two fifth year seniors, are the guys that have to provide it. The rest of them are just babies. It is third down. Nick Davis now has checked into the ball game. Wisconsin's got three wideouts on third and eight. And Mike Samuel out of the shotgun. Skips it in front of the receiver. It is incomplete. Chris Chambers was the intended receiver. So all that speed to the outside was covered. He went down the middle for Chambers and missed him. Wisconsin is not, uh, does not want to get into a passing game, Keith. They love, they like to run it. They led the Big Ten in rushing. They were last in passing. It is Kevin Stimke, a sophomore out of Green Bay, in the punt, and he is very good. The return man for UCLA is Ryan Rock. He's standing at the 10. Sun to deal with. It's bright. High, high, high kick. And they can't keep it out of the end zone. Wisconsin, the man down under the ball, was knocked down by one of the Bruins, and by the time he got up, the ball was gone. UCLA second possession now out of the 20-yard line. We didn't get much fireworks. They both teams moved the ball, but nothing really dramatic. Now, penalties really hurt UCLA yep. on that first drive. Three flags for 46 yards. 
Here's the run now with Foster. Deshaun Foster, a freshman from Santa Ana, 6'1", 205, is close to a first down as he gets out to the 30-yard line. Ross Kaloji made the tackle. Sean is really the, the third string uh, tailback for UCLA, but uh, I, I think uh, in time he has got the best uh, best feet, the best potential, and he's going to be a uh, be some real problem for the defense to handle. He got the most yards. Too. Yeah, and he got the most yards. But I think they they put it, they bring him in third just because he's a true freshman. Kind of uh, keep his head in place. Hey, you do's. <laughs> Look at this. I tell you what, you better get your lariat out and get it loose, limber. Adamoff finally got it. Well, there was good coverage downfield. There was only three receivers down, and uh, that was a coverage sack. Coverage was there, and Kay just uh, had to take the sack. But you better wrap this guy up because he is slippery. Second down now, and a long 11 coming up for UCLA. The Wisconsin defense doing just about what we thought yeah. they might. We mentioned the pressure being on the offenses, and uh, McNown's offense is certainly very good, but he's going up against a really good defense. And it inside. There's nothing there. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Deshaun Foster hit first by Eric Mullick and then by Tom Burke. Monday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series, presents the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, the College Football National Championship game, number one, Tennessee, number two, Florida State. And ABC Sports and ESPN.com will have the first ever enhanced TV during the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. So log on. Yeah, that should be fun. Third down and 10, out of the shotgun now, McNown. Snap is good. Pressure's coming. Runs away from it. Got it. Got just enough of him to spoil the throw. And a great hustle on the part of number 77. That freshman's involved, isn't he? Brian. Right. He was there before and good coverage downfield. The Badger defense, uh, well publicized coming in, forces McNown to move around. Knock him to the ground, and there's nobody open downfield. I think Wendell Bryant is a, is a byproduct of what happens for you when you have postseason play, though, because he's improved steadily through the year. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, he's ready to go. Yeah, well, he's been pretty good, but uh, year, you, there's yeah. no question. If you're a true freshman in, in the depth chart, you must be pretty good. You got a bunch of white shirts up there. Nick Davis is waiting for Sailor's punt. Chris gets it high. It's a beauty. Tight spin on it. And fair catch is made back at the 25-yard line. And there the Wisconsin Badgers will go to work. 46-yard punt, no return, no score, first quarter. Oh, now he's back in there at tailback. And off goes to Ron Dane. And they're letting him pick up a little head of steam. He picks up about three yards on the carry. How many people does it take to have a great football team? How many great players do you need? Here's a perspective from Barry Alvarez. I feel like I have five great players. Lou Holtz always used to say this. You don't need great players at every position. And he always referred everything back to the 68th uh, Ohio State National Championship team where he said we had five great players, a bunch of good players, but great chemistry and so on and so forth. That's the way I look at us. I think we have three great players, Gibson, Dane, and Burke and our two kickers. And that pass is completed to the fullback out of the backfield. The old blocking back, Cecil Martin, getting a catch and getting a first down for the Wisconsin Badgers out about the 47-yard line. Uh, Cecil Martin is the second leading receiver on this uh, Badger ball club. Uh, they throw the first uh, amount of passes to Chambers, their wide receiver, but the blocking back, the fullback, Martin uh, is number two with 17 catches coming in on the year. To go back to the point that Barry made, uh, he gets big people. He knows where all the big people he needs are. They're right in the state of Wisconsin. Skilled people, that's the problem in recruiting. This ball goes to the outside. And on the way, it's Ron Dane. The big guy can travel. It's touchdown, Wisconsin.
He weighs about 260 pounds, depending on what size breakfast he had, and he hauled that down the sidelines pretty well. 54 yards for the score, and the Rose Bowl is more red than it is blue, folks, and all the folks wearing red are standing up, wearing out the palms of their hands. Well, this is just business as usual for the Badgers. They love to run the ball, and they drew an opponent in the Rose Bowl that cannot stop the run. Kick is good. Matt Davenport, who is out of Mission Viejo, California, makes the extra point. And so it is Ron Dane from 54 yards, striking for the score that puts Wisconsin in the lead. Sam Green keys a 75-yard march in three plays for the touchdown, and the Badgers are on the board. Well, it's their style. Uh, you, you heard that little sound bite with Barry. We were talking about players. He said, we can get big players. We can get offensive linemen and fullbacks. With the, the problem is getting the skilled players, and that's why they have to go outside the state to get uh, the good skill players. Dane, of course, came from New Jersey, didn't he? Yeah. He, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a story right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the kick. A Vitaly Pazetsky, who played uh, soccer as a youth for the Red Army soccer clubs in Moscow. Watch the blocking over here on the left side of the line. Ferrario and McIntosh. McIntosh is going to kick out. Ferrario is going to seal and right up inside of him be a huge lane for Ron Dane. From the waist down, he's a shifty halfback, but from the waist up, he's a brute of a fullback. 253 pounds, only 5'10". From the 20 now, it's Keith Brown, deep man in the backfield for the UCLA Bruins, who are somewhat surprisingly, and I, I think generally speaking, a lot of people are going to be surprised that Wisconsin jumps to the lead. That's Kologi making the tackle for the Badgers there, and here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, we know UCLA can score quickly, but let me just give you a little bit of information. That drive took Wisconsin 54 seconds. If you add up all their scoring drives from this season, discount the interceptions in terms of touchdowns or safeties, their average scoring drive is a mere 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Most people would think it takes a lot longer, Keith, for Wisconsin. Not when you strike like that. Back down, still got it. And he's got a man. Ball thrown a little bit behind Danny Farmer, who makes his first catch of the day in front of Jason Doring. Farmer, 6'4", 210, Junior Los Angeles. was a great volleyball player and is on his way to being a great wideout. I mean, he can turn it. He's got a second gear. Little play action out here. Here's Farmer as he's going to come and just go across the field. The tight end on the top of the screen is going to clear it out. Good separation and a nice throw. I tell you, I like that kid Farmer, Keith. Uh, I like good hands, good feet, and uh, I should have asked George's dad yesterday where Danny got that second gear, but George <laughs> didn't have it when he played it. <laughs> Ball is handed off to the deep man. That's number one, Keith Brown. He's out of Phoenix, Arizona, where we're going Monday night. 214 pounder, and he didn't find much, maybe a yard. This is a Badger defense. It, it's. It's Barry Alvarez tells us it's it's like a, it's a blue collar. He says we're we're smart and we're physical. Well, coach, you know the, the biggest compliment any any team can get is when you talk to the other coaches on the other side. And the word I kept hearing from UCLA about the Badger defense was well, coach, fundamentals, sound defense. Second down and nine. McNown out. Getting some pursuit. The pass is away. Pass good to Durell Price coming out of the fullback position. And Price is going to pick up a first down for the Bruins on the Badger side of the field at about the 41-yard line. Next on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series, the Nokia Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans, Ohio State, and Texas A&M. Be there when the Big Ten co-champion Buckeyes square off against the Big 12 champ, the Aggies. Form hasn't been holding up very well. Yeah, the, the, uh, the other dogs have been doing all right. How about my Purdue Boilermakers uh, talking about dogs, underdogs? Uh, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Did all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 this is a great game. This is uh, incomplete. 
it certainly could have been picked off because the Jamar Fletcher camped on it. The ball was intended for Freddie Mitchell, who's supposed to get anywhere from six to eight plays, but uh, he is a real burner, and that ball hung up and could have been picked off. Well, Keith, he, he had him beat, and if, if McNown hadn't have gotten pulled by a defensive man, I think this ball thrown to the outside was going to be a touchdown. touchdown yep. But McNown was just touched a little bit by a defensive lineman. On the 41-yard line, 20. Well, Keith, talking about coverage and in the pass rush, the way Wisconsin's going to be successful is not just to have the corners play closely, but to get that pressure. It has to be in combination. Not one position in the defense can do it all by themselves. You've got to have that pressure on the quarterback, just enough coverage for that receiver when he goes downfield to make sure the quarterback can't get to him, Keith. We've got a timeout charged to UCLA, and uh, we are 7 0 Wisconsin leading the Wisconsin 41 yard line, trailing the Badgers by seven. Movement. Ferris, number 71, I think, flinched. The defender jumped across, and Chris may have moved. If not, it'll be offsides against Wisconsin. They're going to call the offsides. Wisconsin. <laughs> Uh, John Favre was begging it. Oh, John, he's lobbying, trying to say, well, he moved, he moved, he moved. Well, the official didn't agree. <laughs> so it costs the Badgers five yards. That's the first flag on Wisconsin in the ball game. Yep. UCLA has three. Wisconsin is the least penalized team in the Big Ten. In fact, it's been the least penalized the last four years. But now, 7 of 11, starting out. Little option action here with McNown turning up into the middle. And he's a couple of yards short of his first down as Favre out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Ordered down. Wendell Bryant, number 77, leaving. Remember that name. He's going to be around in a while. Somebody's holding him there. Tom Burke to the wide side of the field. They line their All-American. Defensive end up most of the time to the wide side and ran the option at him. Taking care of that time. Third down and two for the Bruins. Price, the fullback, goes outside. He's a good receiver. Flag thrown over there, and a whistle stops him before there's damage. 124 to go in the first quarter. Good ball. Keith, I'm impressed. This is a false start against UCLA. I'm impressed with the Badger defense. UCLA does a lot of things, formations, motions, personnel groups, and the Badgers are not fooled. They, they have their assignments. There's nobody open for uh, UCLA and that play right there that, that didn't even get started. There was nobody for K to throw the ball to. He's rotating people in the trenches, too. You notice that? Yep. Getting, getting them some rest. Yep. Jermaine Lewis checks into the backfield now, number 23 for the Bruins. Double wide, top of the picture, and McNown throw it this way. Pass is caught. Good for the first down to Lewis. Lewis is loose. He scores. <laughs> Brian Foley Dixon, wide out, made the block that took him in. was lined up in the backfield and went through the middle of the line. It's got so many ways to attack you. The coverage was there. He just beat the coverage of Thompson. Chris Saylor for the point. It's good. So at 57 seconds to play in the first quarter in the 85th Rose Bowl game presented by AT&T. We're all even at seven. Take a look here, Keith. This Lewis lined up in the backfield. The man that's covering us right here, he's going to go through the line and then break to our right side. Little fake goes through the line, breaks to the side. Coverage is there, but a great throw. This guy looks like Dave Megan once he gets the football. Keith is about 5'7 and can run like mad. There's uh, Tom Burke, the All-American defensive end, being handled pretty nicely by Pollock. Nice throw. Good throw. 
And Keith and Bob, we talk about the height advantage of a receiver, and we usually forget about what the height advantage means to blocking, but Brian Poley Dixon at 6'5", just towers over that defensive secondary. They couldn't see around him, couldn't make the move to get off of him to see which way the back might go. There was a case where the sun wasn't shining and the defense back just couldn't see, Keith. <laughs> Yeah, well, Mike Eccles playing in Bully Dixon's shadow all right. Yeah, I, I, sure. I, I like the call too, Keith. Al yep. Borges, the offensive coordinator, getting his little back, his scat back through the center of the line and a two-way go on an inside middle linebacker. We've got an interesting comment from uh, Bob Toledo about these the big play stuff. We'll, we'll play it for him in a little while. Ball hangs up pretty well for UCLA on their coverage, and it's good coverage. Downfield, the tackle is made at the 14-yard line by Abdul Aziz. Maybe I should say Aziz Abdul. <laughs> well, the Bruins are used to scoring quickly, Keith. Uh, seven plays every game, over 20 yards. 13 touchdowns in under a minute. But this offense is, is... I like the balance of it. They call it Bruin balance because they can run and pass, but they can also pass you in so many ways, and then the running game is well organized. Kind of interesting, Wisconsin had their huddle on the sidelines and ran out into their formation, and Ahmad Merritt stopped about four steps onto the field, just enough to get inside the hash, and uh, stayed there. He's sort of a sleeper position, but they don't go that way. They do what they do best, run the ball for six yards with Ron Dane out of Berlin, New Jersey. Uh, you said 253. They list him at 258, and I think he's more like 265. Well, how did Barry, he's a big guy? Yeah, he, how did Barry Alvarez get this big back out of New Jersey? Because everybody that was recruiting him wanted him as a fullback, and Barry says, "Hey, come on out. You can be a tailback." And he has been nothing but a great tailback uh, for three years. Broken all the records of Wisconsin. And that's Mike Samuel, the quarterback. Trying to turn it inside on a little option action and couldn't get much out of it. We're going to run out of time in the first quarter. Anthony Fletcher makes that tackle. So we are 7-7. An ABC Sports presentation of the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Returns after this message and the word from our ABC station. In through the air, 114 yards. Surprising thing, UCLA has been penalized four times in the first quarter, whereas all year they were only the second most penalized team in the Pac-10. It's, uh, they don't usually get the flags thrown on them. Now third down and two, they work it in the middle, work it up to the 25-yard line, and that's good for a first down, and there's a flag. So here's a flag. Let's see what that's all about. It's motion on Wisconsin, so they're gonna lose the first down. Well, Keith, and you're in the, it's here in the second quarter with the guys changing into the field. I think Wisconsin might be inclined to throw just a bit more. There's a wicked problem looking back into the backfield for a pass if you're going down to the left side as the people look at this game at, their, at home, looking back into that backfield. But right now in the second quarter, uh, the sun's in front of them. They'll look back in the backfield. They won't have a problem. But keep in mind, this is also UCLA's home field. If there's a trick to dealing with the sun, the UCLA receivers know it, Keith. All right, they go on the penalty to third down and seven. Samuel rolls it out, pressure coming, pass away, pass caught, and it is caught by John Sickman, the tight end, and he's got a first down for the Badgers. Take a look from behind the offense, the tight end on the right side, just a slow block by the tight end. The flanker on the right clears out. A nice call. Uh, by Brad Childress, the offensive coordinator, picking up the first down. He's another guy from New Jersey, Bob. Yes, Sigmund. he is. Yeah. Look at this. Mike Samuel, 38th career start. He doesn't do a lot throwing the football. They don't ask him to do much, but he's played in a lot of football games and won a lot of them. Samuel still got it. Double fake. Let's it go big for Chambers. Well, that wasn't a very aggressive move by Chambers because Anderson sealed him off and he didn't fight his way past him. Well, Anderson. Anderson did a real job. He just locked the door on him. Yeah, Anderson did a nice job. This is a one-man route. They're trying to fool him with a stop and go. And uh, Anderson, Marcus Anderson, uh, 
he's missed some blocks. He's missed some tackles in the last uh, few ball games, but he can cover, and he was right on top of Chambers on that one. No, it is second down and 10 with the ball resting just beyond the 25-yard line. Merritt, number one, goes way wide. He'll be at the top of your picture with Eddie Faulkner in the backfield now for the Badgers. And Faulkner gets the ball. Obviously, he's not as big or strong as Dane, but he is a, perhaps a little quicker. Sophomore out of Muncie, Indiana, picks up three yards on the play. Here comes the big guy back. You can always tell when he arrives. The earth trembles. The china <laughs> rattles in the closet. Dane has six rushes, 88 yards so far, and the long touchdown run. Third down and six now for the Badgers. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. We're just beginning the second quarter of play. Throwing again. Ball is thrown down into the middle quickly to Nick Davis, who slanted in from uh, the wide receiver position, and the freshman picks up a first down. Uh, you're right, Keith. He's been used for punt returns most of the year. But look back here, there's nobody in the center of the field, so Nick Davis just going to run a little bit of a slant right into that area. UCLA is concerned, sending eight, nine guys up to stop the run, and uh, Mike Samuel just completes it for a first down. Take what they give That's you. That's right, and, you, and, and, and Wisconsin has seen a lot of eight- and nine-man defensive fronts, single coverage. This is Faulkner. Trying to cut it back against the traffic, but the only thing wrong with that, he's cutting it back into the pursuit. And uh, the last time he saw the sun was about 15 seconds ago. <laughs> Ampadejo is the leading sacker on this Bruin defense. He has nine coming in. Here's a look at Nick Aliotti. Was, uh, he was beleaguered. He was beleaguered, that's right. He's a good coach, let me say that. He's had a tough year. He's, uh, he's a good coach. He was at Oregon when they were in the Rose Bowl. He coached three years uh, with the Rams. Good football. Samuel breaks a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and turns it up. Look out. Running out of gas, and he's tracked down from behind by Jason Steven. But it is first and goal to Wisconsin as they get down to the eight-yard line. And he nearly broke it. He just kind of ran out of gas down at the eight. But he did pick up 52 yards. Little option going down the line. Nice block right here by, uh, that may be the fullback, uh, Martin. And just the second leading rusher on this uh, Wisconsin team is Mike Samuel, the quarterback. He's done that before and often this year for the Badgers. Stevens, who made the tackle, was shaken up on the play. And uh, he's down on the sidelines. Kind of caught him from behind, and sometimes when that happens, bad things happen to you because... Fun, huh? Yeah, that's all right. I've been reading the Madison uh, State Journal newspaper and, uh, and the Milwaukee papers. Yeah. What? Kind of fun to read their perspective living on here. That's good to see uh, Stevens uh, running off on his own power. Duval Hicks will come in and replace him now at that uh, safety position. But here are the Badgers in the catbird seat. First down and goal to go at the eight-yard line. And here you're going to see some thumping, folks. Badgers averaging 14 yards a carry. Dane the deep man and Cecil Marshalls and Martin's in front of him and Ron's got it. Here it comes. Inside and oh, he got a yard, no more. That was very good reaction by Duval Hicks coming up out of the secondary to help out on that play. Yeah, these Bruins are not big. They're a lot of uh, quick guys, but uh, there's Gibson blocking down. Costa, number 54, comes around, but this is good play, Keith. Like you say, Hicks slows him up. Allows the rest of the guys get there. Fletcher, 96, and the rest of the Bruins. Second down and goal from the seven now, and the Badgers send two wideouts to the top of the picture. That's Martin going in motion. He showed you a while ago he can catch it, but they give it to Dane. Look at him get in behind. Oh, big old guys going to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Casey Raybach. Let him in.
Give you an idea of what uh, Ron Dane is running behind. McIntosh, 317, Ferraro, 304, Raybach, 293, Costa, 309, and Gibson, 370. An offensive line, Keith, has uh, 136 combined starts in those five offensive linemen going against two true freshmen for UCLA making their first starts here today. Miller Bruins go for the block. Can't reach it. Kick is good. And Wisconsin at 10.58 to go in the first half goes back to the lead by a score of 14 to 7. Thompson, the second major. Guess what? Russia. <laughs> Both of his kickoffs today have been in the end zone, but this one's going to hook and go out of bounds. And the Bruins will take it out to the 35-yard line. The offensive line gets a lot of credit for Wisconsin, and they should. Watch the big tackle right here, Gibson. He's going to pull and block out, but the center snaps the ball and then pulls. That's Robach, and the, the running back, Dane, comes right up between the two offensive linemen. Gibson kicks out. Robach hooks number 70 and into the end zone. Dane doesn't go anywhere without that big, good offensive line. Team. And he's learned to be patient behind it, too. Yeah. You can be a whoop to do running back, but if you don't, you're not patient enough to let the big fellas do their thing. So true. You won't go far. You'll end up with a lot of knob knobs on you. From the 35, for the Bruins, first down. Let's see what Mr. Magic can do here. Hands it inside. Price carries, picks up a couple of yards. Momentum changer. That's what Bob Toledo is looking for right now, and it's a considered thing, as he told us about his bag of tricks. I try to find a momentum change, and uh, that's why I run trick plays, if you want to call them that, but I think they're well-calculated plays. They're not just plays you draw up in the dirt and hope that they'll work. So uh, I try to really look hard for those plays. That's part of my job as a, as a head coach. Comes. Here's Mitchell. Here Pitch back to him, and Mitchell lets it go, and he's got a man wide open. Here L. Price. And Price is on his way. Touchdown. We saw it the other day in practice. We saw it, and I love that play. Yeah, it's a great it play. It starts out as an option, and then goes to a reverse. The only difference in the practice the other day, he threw to the guy down the middle. This time, the guy down the middle was covered, and the young wide receiver took, went to his second choice. He's a baby, but he is going to grow up to be something. Whew. Chris Saylor for the point. UCLA Bruins don't take very long to answer, do they? You're talking about momentum changers and trick plays. Call it what you want. It's tied at 14. That's pretty good timing. Did you call for that one? <laughs> nice going. When the kicking, he does all the kicking. At the goal line, it's Nick Davis. He's a burner. Got an 87-yarder against Penn State. He's outside. And finally, the Bruins nail him over around the 42-yard line as Larry Atkins ran him down. Let's go back to the touchdown. Here's Price. He's going to sneak out of the backfield. He's really the number two choice. The receiver right here was the number one choice. Watch as he comes back, flips the ball on an option to, the, to, to uh, Fletcher in the slot, or Mitchell in the slot. He read down the middle. The middle guy was covered, and he went to number two down the sideline. That's pretty good reading for a wide receiver, Keith. Well, Keith, Bob, I don't know if that was a number two receiver or not because at practice, I was standing behind Darrell Price and Freddie Mitchell after they ran that play, and Darrell Price came over to Freddie and said, look, we get in the ball game, we run that play. No matter what, just throw it. I'll catch it. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you, he looked down the middle first. <laughs> Ron Dane with the football, and this time the big fella is caught behind the line of scrimmage for a two-yard loss, leading the tacklers Tony White, a sophomore out of El Paso. 
A little more on this fellow Mitchell, though, before we finish with him. He's thrown the ball twice. He's thrown for two touchdowns. But against Texas in the first quarter before he broke his leg, he had four receptions for 108 yards, including a 79-yard touchdown reception, then threw a 34-yard touchdown pass, gained 30 yards on a reverse, and returned three kicks for 78 yards, and then broke his leg. And now he's back. And he's dynamite. Here's the option. Oh, that was a late pitch. You know, Ron's going to go back to the huddle and say, my man, don't do that That's again. That's just good defensive play, Keith. <laughs> 99, Coleman stringing it out. Hall was in there stringing it out. Good defense. Stevens is back on the field. Jason, uh, who had to leave after he had the wind knocked out of him a while ago. Uh, he's uh, back now. Here comes Nick Davis back into the ball game for Wisconsin. He brings some speed. Ahmad Merritt, the other speedster in that uh, wideout group, has not seen the ball yet today. Third down now and eight yards to go. Out of the shotgun, Mike Samuel. Has good protection. The pass is incomplete. It's off the hands of Nick Davis. Ball was too high. Davis was there yeah. and available. For sure. He was wide open, single coverage. Samuel just threw it a little bit high. And this is where UCLA wants to get Wisconsin in these types of situations, third and six or seven. I mean, that, that pass should be completed, but Wisconsin is last in the conference in throwing the football. Kevin Stimke, number 14, 197 pounder, averaging 41 yards per punt. Left puts it out of there. He gets a lot of air under the ball. That's a beauty. Ryan Rock waiting back at the 10-yard line. Makes the reception. And UCLA will have it. First down at their own 10. 46-yard punt and no return. Eight. All right, the Bruins from the 10-yard line will go to work. End it off inside. Try to run it a little bit with Jermaine Lewis. Uh, sophomore out of Lancaster. He's only 5'7", as Bob said a while ago, but he weighs about 180, 85 pounds, so he's stocky and tough. And that's a good offensive line that the Bruins have, uh, too, Keith. We've talked about Ferris on the left side being the Outland Trophy winner, but Myers, the right guard, and Stewart, the center, those two guys on the inside are the real leaders on that offensive line, and, oh, they, are, and they are bright, too. They pop you. Good students. Good academics. All right, very high. Stewart's well on his way to his master's, I guess. Little quick, oh, it's tipped at the line of scrimmage. Big old hand got up there from John Favre, I think it was, and slapped it down. Next on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series, Nokia presents the Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans, Ohio State and Texas A&M. Big 10 co-champ against the Big 12 champ. A pretty good ball game. I think that's going to be a great game. David Boston's got a hobble. Yeah, yeah so I we'll miss him. Third down and seven. McNown's got all kinds of green grass in front of him, and he is not timid. He's across the 25 for the 26 before Leonard Taylor can bring him down. That's a first down for UCLA. You know, when we talked to Cade uh, at practice the other day, and when he was a freshman, his legs got uh, moving too quickly, and he did this too much. But uh, now that he's four years later, he uses it very smartly. And that was a great chance to uh, pick up a first down with his legs. We had a great interview with him that never got on. That always happens uh, this time of the year. Games go a little longer, and the next one goes a little longer. And then the first thing you know, all of your free game stuff is uh, yeah. back in the closet. He's a good kid, though. He's great. And a bright kid. And it to the right side, and that's a run by Jermaine Lewis. It'll get him up across the 30, maybe pick up. I'll give you an idea after this next play, uh, the kind of guy that uh, Cade McNown is, and let you see him up close, because uh, he definitely has some fixed ideas on who he is. He knows who he is, uh, but he also has some ideas on how he likes to play this game, and he plays it that way. But we'll show you that in a minute. 31-yard line, where it is going to be second down. Danny Farmer's been quiet, Bob. Yes, he has. 
and he's been the leading receiver. Deshaun Foster now is in the backfield for the Bruins. Farmer has two for 27 yards. Foster's got it. Slips away from one, and then he's taken down out near the 35-yard line. Here's what uh, Cade McNown has to say about the way he plays the game of football. I don't necessarily like the phrase, let the game come to you. Because <laughs> I think, you know, we're on offense. We need to make plays. We need to make things happen. Uh, but there's a, a line there that you don't want to cross, and that's in rushing things and, and trying to force things. A very bright guy. And that is the first thing that you look for in a quarterback. Not a strong arm, not height, you know, not uh, any of those other uh, physical things, but decision-making and intelligence, and this guy's got it. On third down, Foster, second effort after contact, gets the first down. One of the big things about uh, Ron Dane uh, in his career at Wisconsin has been the amount of yardage he picks up after the first contact. Well, this youngster Foster has got some pop in his legs, and he gets something after he's hit, usually, too. Those are the great running backs. They get stronger as the game goes on. You know, it's, it's, it's almost uh, scary to look at all the skill players that UCLA is going to have back next year. They have seven guys back on offense, and all the skill players are back. The wide receivers, the running backs, everybody except back the back. quarterback. And I'd like to be a quarterback coming in and play those guys. Pass is away. Pass is caught on the Wisconsin side of the field by tight end Mike Green. Well, the blue-collar guys finally got a call. Jason Doring, the tackle. I like, I like what McDowell does there, Keith. He gets outside the pocket, and then he's able to get himself, find himself, find. They want to contain him, first of all, but he gets outside. Now, watch his feet. See his footwork? He stops. He saw a little window, stepped up, and got the ball right there on target. Very accurate. Reminds me a lot of uh, the quarterback at uh, Jackson, Mark Brunel. Now, the other yeah, left-hander. Um, who's from up the road here in Santa Maria, yeah. yeah. At the University of Washington. Yep. Fine time, going Look back, out. in zone, Farmer, touchdown. <laughs> Danny Farmer. They law you to sleep. Draw into certain stuff, and then they go deep. Jamar Fletcher was the defender on this play, Bob. Roll out. Now you got a lot of time. Top of your screen. Just throws it away. A little bit underthrown, but he gets up and makes the catch. Kick by Sailor for the point, good. So at 5.15 to go in the first half. It's 21-14, UCLA, a play. But now breaking containment, he got a lot of time to throw. Here's Farmer, just goes straight down, run to the post, and when he gets outside the pocket, then he has the time to let the receiver throw. Left side of your screen, got lots of time. The mobility of the quarterback, Wisconsin has got to contain him, Keith. They just can't let him keep getting outside the pocket. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do. It's hard to do because the offense wants to get him outside, and they draw up ways to get him outside. Nick Davis will take it beyond the field of play as Saylor nailed it. And so uh, Wisconsin will get the ball. Down is now 10 of 15 for 175 yards and two touchdowns. 25 touchdown passes this season, and that's a UCLA single-season touchdown pass record breaks his own record one that he had shared with Troy Aikman so now here comes Wisconsin uh, try to answer Wisconsin jumped out to lead 7-0 Bruins came back to tie Wisconsin back to the lead Bruins back to tie now the Bruins to the lead and Ron Dane is the deep man and he's got the ball hit behind the line of scrimmage breaks the tackle and hits upfield here comes that 18 wheel to pain, uh, 40 yard line. Tony White had a hold of him behind the line of scrimmage, but uh, ran right through him. Well, let's take a look and see what uh, Ron Dane has done so far. Uh, going up inside, delivering a little pain, going outside. Second touchdown. 
He's got the bounce to get outside, and then he's got the explosion when he goes inside to deliver the ball. He's also got his 23rd 100-yard uh, game already here in the first half. This is Samuel keeping, and uh, Atkins comes up to help on the play, and the tackle is made. Robert Thomas primarily the tackle. 118 yards on 11 carries. Pretty good average, huh? Over, yeah. 10, over 10 yards. 23rd career 100-yard game. And it's, it's with uh, almost five minutes to play in the first half. So those big uglies up front there, Hoss. Oh, yeah. Sick them. Thank you. <laughs> Ball on the 44. That's good to the fullback, Martin. And big old Cecil Martin brought down by Robert Thomas down near the 40 yard line. Thomas is a freshman for UCLA out of Imperial, California. Offensive line blocking down. Ferrario is the uh, guard that pulls. Martin is a special guy, Keith. He's the fullback that blocks. We mentioned earlier how much he. Uh, much how many passes he's caught in fact he's caught now 63 in his career he's a four-year starter and a two-time uh, member of the good works team ncaa good works team best things in the community Monday. oh look at this they knock him out but he's done his damage chad coons the fullback cecil had come out for drink of water Coons went in and opened the door for him, and here they are. The guy went out to get a drink of water, huh? Yeah, he had lost his job. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the speed of a tailback and the power of a fullback. Look at the feet. Look at the vision in the feet. Big man, like 255 pounds. to have good feet like that and vision? Wow. That's just special. It's first and goal at the four-yard line for Wisconsin. It would appear unless they make a mistake and they don't make too many they'll answer the UCLA touchdown uh oh that's a mistake it's Bill Ferrario who just had a good block earlier broke. Yep. yeah Ferrario had a good block earlier now makes a mistake mental mistake all start will cost them five yards so it'll be first and goal from the nine yard line and Eddie Faulkner Comes in to the backfield. That says Dane is out. Dane's out. Martin's out. Look for the option inside here, maybe. Uh, we like to run the option and with Samuel. I haven't given you all the officials yet, and uh, I will as soon as I get a chance. There's your man getting a drink of water now. A couple more, uh, couple more delays, and he'll be back in there. <laughs> Here we go. First and goal from the nine. This is Faulkner. See, he's, he doesn't have the power of that, that big guy, and then Thomas is up there to make another tackle for UCLA. Here comes uh, Dane and Cecil Martin back in. Joe Darden is the umpire. Carl Johnson, the headlines with Roger Rogers, the line judge. Scott Gaines, side judge. Mike Weatherford, the field judge. And Ron Murphy is the back judge. And Tom Ollers is the alternate. Tom, Tom sitting under the umbrella in the shade, enjoying himself. That's the first tackle for a loss today for UCLA. There goes Dane. See the difference? Touchdown! Cecil Martin leading, Dane following that big old line rumbling, and he's in the end zone. That's three touchdowns now for Ron Dane. Ron and Dane is not going to go down by himself. You have to tackle him. You have to put him on the ground. Watch the power of his legs. Costa gets a good block inside, number 53. It reminds me a lot of a guy I played with, Keith. Larry Zonka, just a big bull. He said, I'm not going down until somebody puts me down. Larry couldn't run that fast, could he? Well, he wasn't that fast, but he was like, <laughs> that play was uh, strength and, uh, and power. Boom. 
It's 21-21. So we've got ourselves a cracking good ball game in this 85th Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. So he's uh, he's coming back next year. And he, if he stays healthy, he's probably going to break uh, Ricky Williams. I think he'll break all the records. Break all the records. Archie, yeah. Archie Griffin's Big yep. Ten record. Everything. The NCAA record. Pozetsky's kickoff will carry to the goal line. And here comes Rock. That's a good run by Ryan all the way out past the 30, out to near the 33. And he almost popped out of the pile. Your little Russian kicking kicker friend tried to trip him. <laughs> he got down there and tried to trip him. And he missed. <laughs> that was enjoyable talking to him the other night at the hotel. In English, not Russian. <laughs> First down for the Bruins. They put it right on the 32-yard line, and Kate McNown gets outside again. They got him this time. Brought down back on the 27-yard line. It was Bob Adamoff and Tom Burke. Adamoff, one of the captains, walked on and became a captain. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Who holds the UCLA records for the most passing yards and touchdowns in a Rose Bowl game? Well, the answer is that guitar picker now living over in Colorado, <laughs> Rick Neuheisel. Four touchdowns, 298 yards. Rick uh, is, is here this week. In fact, he went into the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. Yes, he did. There's some of his uh, stuff when he did his thing for UCLA. Yeah. Nice guy. Timeout been called here by the Bruins. He's got some stuff uh, waiting to play at quarterback, too. Folks may not know a whole lot about. Second down and 16 now for the Bruins. Now gets it off. Very accurate. Danny Farmer. I mean, a left-hander running to his right, able to set himself, square his shoulders, plant his feet, and throw it exactly between the numbers. Well, it's because he, he, like you say, he squares his shoulders and gets his feet. Good feet, good shoulders, and good mobility. Down, break to the outside. He knows you got a little bit more time because the quarterback is outside the pocket. Timeout, Wisconsin. Clock stop. Ball is on the 41-yard line. Kevin was the one who said the other day that uh, having the home team have to call time because they can't hear the cadence, that's the ultimate. Well, there's more red in this stadium than there is blue. That's right. On third and one, they hand it over to Durell Price, the fullback, and he slashes over the right side and will get his first down. Burel is from Silmar, California, out in the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> McNown is 6'1", if you don't know his dimensions, at 209. Danny Farmer is 6'4", 210, and a great leaper. He's a great volleyball player. I mean, he's part of that national championship bunch over there at UCLA. They've won it a couple of times. And yeah. He's a, he's a very, very good volleyball player. In fact, he's so good a volleyball player that they let him off spring football practice to play volleyball. Now, that tells me something about the football coach. <laughs> well, there's, uh, there's Danny. See how high off the floor he is? Look at that. George, of course, uh, George played football and also basketball and was part of that UCLA uh, uh, National Basketball Championship team under John Wood in 1970. And Dave Farmer, the uncle, Dave played at USC. But didn't they say yesterday that Dave was going to wear Bruin colors today? Yep. He said they went down to the store and wearing Bruin oh, colors. Oh, they must have done something. <laughs> First down and 10. Back goes McNown. He's hit just as he throws it. And uh, the pass goes awry as John Favre, who is one of the quicker people across the defensive front for Wisconsin, gets the penetration and hit him. Well, McDowell does a lot of smart things and a lot of good movements, 
but here he does a good thing. He, he, he saw that there was nothing downfield, that the pressure was there, and he got rid of the ball. Yep. That's tough to teach a quarterback to get rid of the ball. Abort it. Don't, don't stay with the play any longer. Line up and play again. Get rid of it. Don't take the loss. Yeah, don't take it. Second down and 10. That's Farmer in motion. Underneath it, pass is complete to Brad Melsby. And Melsby out of Los Alamitos, California, will pick up a first down for UCLA and move the chains over to the Wisconsin side. Penalty flag waiting back up field. It's thrown way over here and then to the near sideline. Long way away from the ball. And they've called holding on the Bruins, so take away the first down. Take away the play to Melsby. And yeah. bring it back. Those two defensive ends, Burke and Favre, have not gotten a sack yet, but they've given a lot of problems to those two offensive tackles and putting the pressure on McNown. Ryan Pollock and uh, Chris Ferris. Sean Stewart, you saw there that big 52 a while ago. He's the center. Uh, Todd Burke, the, uh, the All-American defensive end, is the national leader in sacks and tackles for loss this year. He's relentless, isn't he? Uh, he just he is oh. uh, he's just had an outstanding year. He just uh, he just doesn't stop. He's got the motor, he's got the talent, he's got the heart. Back to throw McNown. Low. Short hopped it on the farmer. Coming up on the national. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't. All they have to do is spell B O B. <laughs> Wouldn't take so many <laughs> band members. You know, the cheerleading group might be able to do it. <laughs> Third down and 26. Oh, that's. Here's the sun. Swanee's been telling you yep. about how tough that sun is. Yep. The Wisconsin man was in absolutely the perfect spot to intercept the ball. It was right in his hands, and Mike Eccles couldn't see it. Yep. And it goes incomplete. Yep. You're looking back right into that yeah. sun. Here's a look at it. Rose to his left. Look at Eccles. He's right there. Look at the long shadow. Never saw it. Yeah. It'll be gone pretty soon, down behind the wall. On fourth down now, the Bruins okay. will have to punt. Chris Saylor with 2.08 to play in the first half. 21-21 time. Oh, that's a good kick. That's a rocket. Woo. All the way back inside the 20-yard line for Nick Davis runs into his own man, gets tangled up in the pressure, and then down he goes at the 22. 55 yards, a three-yard return. These two punters have done a good job today so far. Yes, they have, and both teams have good special teams. Uh, as you heard Barry Alvarez say a little earlier, we've got five great players. I didn't want one to get back to this. We've got five great players on this team. He mentioned a couple offensive linemen uh, and a defensive lineman, and he mentioned Dane, and then he mentioned my two kickers. Yep. Five great players, and two of them are my kickers. Well, Davenport comes in as a point machine for them. He's yeah. been had a spectacular year. Kind of interesting. Uh, he's from California, and uh, uh, Davenport and Chris Saylor played uh, youth soccer against each other. Yes. Run it up the middle with Faulkner. Oh, he gets outside. Drops his shoulder and puts a little hurt on the DB coming up, and we'll have a first down for Wisconsin at the 35-yard line. Well, that's over 230 yards rushing against this UCLA defense here in the first half, and we haven't finished yet. Looks like a repeat of the Miami game. Faulkner breaking a couple of tackles. This defense, Keith, is, is seven of the 11 are sophomores or freshmen, but they're just, they just don't, they're not good tacklers. They need to work in the spring on tackling. It's fundamentals, blocking and tackling. That's Chambers. And Chris Chambers moves it close to midfield. A minute and 40 to go in the first half. Perfect example of a missed tackle. The corner coming up and trying to make a big hit instead of just bringing him down. Watch uh, Marcus Anderson, number seven, trying to make a big play. That's just, that's just poor tackle. That's the first catch today for Chambers. They've thrown it to him, but that's his first catch. 
And here's another one. Right on the sidelines and past the marker for a first down at the UCLA 39-yard line. Remember Davenport. Bob and Keith, this couldn't be more than perfect for Wisconsin. Second half, it's a tie ball game, last possession uh, probably of this half, but they've got everything working in their favor. They've been able to get big chunks of yards, running the football, throwing safe passes. The sun is not an issue for them right now, and they should have all the confidence in the world that they can put the ball in the end zone before the end of the half, Keith. But 39-yard line, minute 29. Faulkner is your running back. That's Samuel on a quarterback draw. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another one. Runs over one and gets inside the 25 down to the 22. Mike Samuel is not a gimme. He's 6'3", 218 pounds and grew up in Philadelphia. So he's probably the butted head with somebody before. Very good runner. He's the second leading rusher on this team, and there's a lot of rushing yards to be had against the Bruin defense. And the Bruin defense is called timeout. At least the coach has and said, guys. Here's a look at UCLA defense. Last two games, they played Miami December the 5th. Gave up 371 yards the entire game. And this, they'll, they'll get by that. They keep running like this. Ball near the 22-yard line. Ron Dane is back. Minute 21 to play. Dane's got it. Back. Cuts back. Hammers in there for close to five. I'll tell you what, you're getting five, six yards on first down. Chances are you're going to win the game. And that's what they're doing. And timeout is called now by Wisconsin stopping the clock with 113 to play. And the timeout's remaining. The bad it is second down. They're calling it six. Three wide outs. Samuel better hurry. Oh, he's got no chance. Bruins said, wait a minute, you're not going to do that to us. And they sent, they, they sent everybody. Ryan Lease got there first. Looked like one of them got off sides at the end up there. I don't, I don't see a flag, though. Nope. Nick Alioli was telling us they may go to five and six defensive linemen, I mean defensive backs, and blitz to stop the run. They've now spent their last time out at 50. So the Badgers will try to go for something big here to get a first down. They've got to go inside. They got to go to the seven yard line. Pressure coming, give the ball to Payne. Payne running in the traffic. They'll take it down to about the 23. And here comes Matt Davenport. Davenport is 32 of 37 this season. Eight out of nine from 10 to 29 yards. We got a Bruin shaking up on the play and down on the field. It's and we've got 44 seconds and counting now as John Lowry winds the clock. Ball will be snapped from the 23. And it's going to be marked at the 30, so it'll be a 40-yarder. Tim Rosga holds it. Special teamer. And here's Mr. Davenport from Mission Viejo, California, trying to hang one on the boot. He's untied it. It is 24-21. Wisconsin with 17 seconds away from the clubhouse at home. Kickoff. Rolling around on the ground. Badgers coming in a hurry. Bruins trying to cover it. And they're still fighting for it. 11 seconds to go in the first half. Wisconsin says, we've got it. Bruins say, hold on. Meantime, underneath all that humanity, the fight goes on. Let's see one of those fellas in one of those striped shirt sets. Now, guys, the officials can clear this pile. You don't have to start pulling. Now, Bruins ball. UCLA ball. Took a while, though, didn't it? <laughs> My goodness. Swanee was talking about good memories of coming back into this Rose Bowl. Take a look at this. Well, they were kind of a lazy, fair attitude getting to that ball. Yeah. Swanee was talking about good memories yeah. when he comes yeah. back in here. I, Remember the extra I, point I, you kicked, right? That's what I'm going to hear, right? No, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying I've got two good memories of this. Oh. Back when I kicked those extra points, and then <laughs> last year when uh, Brian led Michigan, I'll oh. tell you, that was special. Yep, Somebody was special. asked me what was uh, what, what meant more, 
Super Bowl wins or winning your Rose Bowl or your son, and there ain't no question. But seeing, uh, seeing that, that's something special. All right, we've played a half, and we've got ourselves a good football game. Wisconsin 24, UCLA 21. Coming up, National Car Rental. I'll tell you the best way, I think, to tackle one day is you take four great big barrels, fill them full of water, and roll them all in, or something like that. <laughs> he's, a, he's a load. All right, here's the Nokia player comparison with Dane and McDowell. Dane's getting it on the ground, averaging 11 and a half yards a carry. Cade through the air, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And those are your two All-Americans right there. First down for the Badgers, UCLA 34-yard line. Eddie Faulkner. And Faulkner is knocked down by Todd McBride. But he got something out of it. Like seven yards. He's second down and three. From ground level. Big holes there, big Chris, holes. Chris, you could run if, through that. Yeah, if you just joined us at the beginning of the game, the UCLA defensive line had some injuries in there. Micah Webb is not playing. Uh, Lombard is another guy not in there. Two true freshmen defensive linemen started for the first time uh, this year in this ballgame. This is Faulkner bouncing, looking for the hole, and we'll have the first down. Picked up about five yards on the carry. Again, it's McBride making the tackle, but moved the change. Down to about the UCLA 21-yard line. Chris McIntosh, the left tackle, just doing a great job in there. You know, Gibson on the other side gets all the uh, acclaim, but uh, McIntosh has started 38 straight games and uh, is uh, he just he just blows this guy off the line of scrimmage. Going against Ian Badejo right there, 75, about six or seven yards downfield. Ron Dane is back. Has it? Look at that. Look at that. Would you believe? Touchdown, Wisconsin. What a great move behind the line of scrimmage by that big 255 pounder. You cannot become good tacklers in one game. They were bad tacklers all season. They're going to be bad tacklers today. Four touchdowns for Ron Dane in the ball game. The most points ever scored in the Rose Bowl was Neil Snow, Michigan against Stanford back in 1902. All right. Malibu Kelly he stayed Hayes up late. Gave us that. Oh, did he? 25 was the record. Dane with four touchdowns. So here comes a load of pain, and he has really had himself a day to day. Badgers out by 10, 31 to 21. They need some points now. Yeah, nothing different than any other time this year. I mean, nope. they've had to score a lot to win. This time, Vitaly got all of it. Uh, George will be messing with me, boys. I'll kick it out of the stadium. The offensive line did a nice job, but look at the fullback get his block, and also Merritt, number one, is going to come in and get a nice block also. And then Ron Dane just throws a move at one guy and runs by a couple others, and he's talking. Um, I mean, this this, this is this, it doesn't get much easier than that. 216 yards on 19 carries and four touchdowns. And he's got another half to play. I mean, we're just starting here. UCLA to the attack from the 20 as Deshaun Foster now. We'll carry the ball across the 25 to the 26, and we'll wait to see what that yellow flag means. I'll lay it on the field. It's holding against the Bruins. So now. Things are not going so well for UCLA's offense. One thing about the Wisconsin defensive people, they are dogged. They are right in your face all the time. You may beat them once in a while, but they're still there. Michigan was the only team that handled them this year, and Michigan beat them at the line of scrimmage on quickness. Yep. You get to Dane before yeah. he gets that second step, you got a chance. You stop Dane in the backfield. Yep. It's not happening here today. 
So it's a 10 yard penalty and it'll be first down and 17 for the Bruins as the ball comes back to about the 13 yard line. Back down. Looking and looking. Now goes and it's batted back to him and it is incomplete. That's the second time today he's had a pass slap back at him. Yeah, and, that, and the defensive linemen for Wisconsin uh, have, have batted balls down all year. 19 balls coming into the game. The defensive line have batted balls down. And as you mentioned, a couple more here today. There's pressure. Young uh, freshman Bryant. He's played very well. McNown doesn't mind getting the Richard dirty. He doesn't care about that. He's a tough guy. Well, he'll do whatever he needs to do, but, but they're not letting him sit back here. They roll out. Now he dumps it off. Good Pass play. good to Durell Price. Got him a little daylight. And Price, who took off earlier down the sidelines and got loose for a touchdown, was just barely shoved out there by Bobby Myers. So move your change. First down Bruins. Well, the poor tackling is not only wearing a blue jersey, but the... Uh, one of the Badgers uh, came out and kind of did an ole. <laughs> <laughs> Get him a fork. Of course, Bryce had a little bit to do with that, too. And Kevin Cosgrove will be waiting on the sideline for him. Bryce has uh, three catches for 102 yards and a touchdown himself today. This is uh, Deshaun Foster running into traffic and picking up a couple of yards up to the 40-yard line. Discipline is a word on that Wisconsin defense, Keith. Uh, we mentioned that they're smart. They're very physical like most Big Ten teams are, but uh, four, four players, four starters on the Badger defense were walk-ons. And that tells you something about uh, that quality and the character of those young men. In fact, two of the walk-ons are now the co-captains on defense, Thompson and Adamoff. Back down, looking. Nobody there now. Throws and out of bounds. Caught out of bounds. Incomplete. Why walk on? Bob Adamoff has an opinion on it. You know, kids have seen the success um, other kids have had at Wisconsin as far as walking on. They know Coach Alvarez is going to give them a chance. If they can play, they'll play. And if not, you know, it's not cut off for everybody. But kids see the success that walk-ons have have set the path for them and and they want to be a part of that. Bob Adamoff, linebacker and captain, who made a place for himself. Third down and nine of the crowd coming up to support the defense. There's more red than blue in this Rose Bowl. And McNown flushed. Takes off. Got his first down. He is willing. A good word, a good choice of words there, Keith. Because if he did not take that chance, he would have not have gotten the first down. Yeah, he goes hook sliding at about the 47-yard line. He didn't get it. Yeah, the two ends, Favre and uh, Burke, pressure him out of the pocket. Uh, Kalaji was there also. But if he doesn't go airborne here over Godorzi, 16, he doesn't make it. That's his throwing arm he landed on, too. You know, you only do okay. that in special games, certain games. You know, you saw Elway do it in the a Super Bowl, and now you see Down him doing it in the middle. Danny Farmer. Inside the 10 to the 5. They can go the length of the field in a breath. Well, they came in averaging 41 points, the Bruins. Farmer is one of the big reasons why. He came in with 51 receptions, eight touchdowns on the year. Keith and Bob, you know, Danny Farmer is not the fastest guy in the world. He only has about middle four six speed, but he has what I call getaway speed. No matter where he goes in the field, he's got enough speed to get open and get away from the coverage, Keith. There's speed and there's speed, 20, right? Football speed is what he's got. And McNown now has people lined up in the wrong place. And calls timeout. It's also interesting that he's in a. He, they play their home games here at the Rose Bowl, and he can't hear the signals because. Bruins to the attack now. First down and goal. Ball at the Wisconsin six yard line. They're trailing by 10 points. Crowd is into the act. McDowell will go ahead and call it. Double wide right side. Fakes the pitch. Doesn't. 
go to he the first pitch. man, yeah. goes to the second man, and the pitch worked. No. Deshaun Foster lost the ball, didn't he? Yes. Yep, Wisconsin comes up with it. Foster thought it was a handoff, but now tossed it to him. It may be because of the noise in the stadium, that end of the stadium down there, that they got their signals crossed. It's Myers, 78, the right guard. He tosses this ball. Foster, the true freshman, expected a handoff. And the turnover, the first of the ball game. It was covered by Chris Cadorzi. And the Wisconsin Badgers have dodged a bullet. I can't believe that they would do a toss, Keith. Unless it was a check with me, we're either going to run a, a, a handoff over right tackle or we're going to toss it around the right end. They, ne they certainly wouldn't toss it and go run right over the right tackle. Samuel out of his end zone. Gets it off. Pass is completed to his tight end, Sickman. Now they've got some daylight, and there's a penalty flag thrown. you got a face mask call coming up against the Bruins. And all of a sudden, Wisconsin's going to be out somewhere near the 40-yard line, maybe farther. I'll tell you what. Old Mo may have put on a white shirt. Yeah. Wisconsin leads the nation in turnover margin. We mentioned that. They got the turnover inside their own five-yard line. And now with this play and the penalty, they're going to be out near the 40. Wow. 38 to be exact. So Deshaun Foster mulling over the bad thing that happened to him. Obviously, uh, he didn't know, or the Andy Myers, I'm sure, was telling Bob Toledo, Coach, you can't hear. Well, you know, you got, you got an experienced senior quarterback and a, a freshman running back. This is Ron Dane, and Dane is taken down. This time, number 47, Ryan Neese locks his legs, and they get him down. Go back to that fumble inside. Look at that. He tosses it to him. He's waiting for a handoff. Can't tell. It looked like it was supposed to be an inside play. It looked yep. like it was supposed to be a handoff. Yep. John Sigman, incidentally, had one career reception when he came to the ballpark today. He now has two. The 38 yards on the last one was a big. Samuel. Running in behind Cecil Martin. And he'll get about three yards on the carry. I hate to say it, Hoss, but it looked like on that replay from that fumble down there that might have been the quarterback's fault. Mm, it did, didn't it? My gum. You know, if you live long enough, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Finally, a concession. <laughs> I hate to go against my man Kane, you know. Fourth year guy, All American, but. Uh, it could have been a checkoff, though. I mean, it could have been could a checkoff. Been. Could, but, uh, Looked but to you, me like that's what But you don't was. want to be checking off down yeah. inside the five in a, in a loud stadium, either. I think that's what Myers was trying to argue. Yeah. That coach can't hear. No matter what, it's a big turnover, and they yep. got plenty. UCLA has plenty of time to score enough points to win the game. Timeout, Wisconsin. It comes with 7-11 to go in the third quarter, and the ball is out at the 42-yard line as they lead 31 to 21. It was a lot easier on the Wisconsin side right now after that turnover by UCLA on a first and goal situation down the six-yard line. The Badgers have the ball third down and six now out at their own 42-yard line. And Samuel getting heat from the backside. Got a man open. Chambers drops the ball. Chris Chambers had a touchdown in his pocket. Great call by Brad Childress, the offensive coordinator. Third and short, does a little stop and go. Samuel pumps the ball right there, third and six. Go down five yards and stop. Here's a look at it. Little slant and go. This Chambers, was, Chambers yeah. has caught most of these this year. Got to catch him with your hands. Yeah. Let it get into his body, didn't he? He's caught a lot of those this year, but he didn't catch that one. Stipke hangs it up high, and it's rocked back at the 14-yard line. And he's looking for a little help, and finally is taken down at about the 20-yard line. Here's a very good lesson for you. If, you got, if you're learning to be a pass receiver, you young folks, don't let that thing get to your body. 
He's caught seven touchdowns on the year. Chambers is the guy they go to. They're big play guys. He's averaged over 20 yards per reception. And you're right, Keith. He let it get into his body and looked like he took his eyes off of yep. it. Look it into your hands, not your body. Jermaine Lewis is the running back now, the deep man for UCLA. Cade McNown rolls it out, down by 10 points, throws, and it is caught by Brad Meltsby. And he's on the Wisconsin side. First down, Bruins at the Badger 40. Leonard Taylor made the tackle. So from the 20 to the other team's 40. This is just well, well designed. Two receivers on the same side. Just send the, the first one out to clear everything out and send the second one down and out and hit him underneath the coverage. 40-yard pass play. First one deep. McNown throwing that ball right over the defensive back. He's fearless. UCLA can score points. I mean, they'll score enough points. They've averaged 41, as I mentioned. And it, here comes uh, Danny Farmer on a reverse. And he'll get it down to about the 32-yard line. Donnell Thompson. That's a Moyer didn't have a bad year either. Oh, look at Lewis find daylight. Jermaine Lewis, sophomore, streaking through to get a first down for UCLA. And the Bruin offense looks like it's got its jaw set and mindset right now. Ball is just inside the 25-yard line for a first down. Bruins have scored over 34 points, Keith, in nine of their 11 games. It's over 900 yards of offense. You like offense? Lewis again. Little crack. Uses it well. Goes to the 20. This is just a normal game for UCLA. I've always said they're the most entertaining team in college football. Their games this year have averaged 68 points and over 900 yards of combined points and yardage. And they're already over 900. They haven't reached 68 points yet, but somehow I think they might get close. And their partisans lead the nation in cardiac arrest. <laughs> Second down and five. McNown option pitches back. This is Foster. First down. Whoa. That's some tackle by Jason Doring as Deshaun went flying and got his first down at the 13-yard line. Doring comes from the center of the field. Number eight. He's been one of the real uh, impact players on that defense this year. Jason Doring. The two 30, ends. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Keith. I just said the two ends and Doring uh, make all the tackles. 31-21. Badgers all leading. Bruins gave one away, a chance away a while ago with a turnover at the first and goal at the six. Now they're knocking on the door again, but there, the right side Pollock moves too soon, and that'll cost them five. It must really be hard to hear down there, and that end of the Rose Bowl. He's all red. Dead ball foul, ball start, offense. Five yards, repeat, first down. Look at that. You can certainly tell where the county line is, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Keith, I'm standing in this end zone. Are you right? It's a sea of red. Whenever this crowd gets up and gets going, I can't even hear myself, so I know it's extremely hard for Caden McNown. You just got to go on first sound, don't you? Quick, quickly. No, you can't do that because you don't know. Nobody know when it's going to come. You got to go on a rhythmic count. Well, is he entitled to ask for relief? You ask for some water at the sideline there. Oh, no, no, I mean some uh, <laughs> referees help the hush. Question. <laughs> They're knocking on the door on first down and 15, having just made a five-yard mistake to back them up to the 18-yard line. They just gave away a scoring opportunity on their last possession. If they score here, they've got certainly a very good chance to win the game. If they don't score here, uh, Wisconsin chances rise dramatically. Mac 
Now it's got daylight. Going for it. And goes out of bounds at the 10 yard line. So now they're back to the original line of scrimmage and then some. Picked up uh, three yards from what was the original line of scrimmage. And they'll be looking at second down and seven. Good coverage downfield. He had the ball probably uh, seven or eight seconds, including the scramble, and nobody got open. So second and seven from the 10, and it's Freddie Mitchell at the top of the picture. Into the middle goes Jermaine Lewis. Touchdown. Just the offensive coordinator spreads everybody out and runs the midget up the middle. Look at the splits in the offensive line. Big splits. That's Myers, 78, that came across to make the trap block and a nice job by Lewis to reach the ball into the end zone. What'd you say, old Andy's got a mean streak in him. Andy, Mo Andy Myers, yes. Good player. Only on the football field. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Chris Saylor converts. And we're now at a three-point ball game. 31 to 28, Wisconsin leading, and the Bruins will be kicking off to them. And the numbers are rolling up. We're approaching record size here. There was a time back in 1963, Wisconsin played in this game. Ron Vanderkellen and Pete Bethard hooked up, and the referee had the first uh, live mic during the course of a game, and it went on for an eternity. They had to turn on the truck lights to finish. They needed a convoy to get home. Pat Richter was on that uh, ball club. Uh, now the AD at Wisconsin. Pat was a played end, caught a bunch of balls. What year was that, Hoss? That's Chuck Young, the former chancellor at UCLA, an old friend, huh? What year was that? 1963. It's an old friend who's retiring from uh, his job as the executive director of the Tournament of Roses, Jack French. After next season. He's been a grand fellow. I've enjoyed his company a lot. And he's done a great job for the Rose Bowl and for those who have come and gone. Well, Wisconsin and has scored on five of their eight possessions, Keith, so it, I think it's going to continue. Yeah, it might be. So far, the combined yardage total is 933 yards, which is a Rose Bowl record. I didn't think we'd have that. I thought we'd have some. We're, you know, in six, seven hundred range. Eight hundred thousand yards. You're going to blow that out pretty good. Oof. Well, Eddie Faulkner didn't do a very good job of handling the ball, but he gets it back out for the 21, and it's the first down. Well, coming into the ball game, we thought that uh, Ron Dane would have a big game going against this UCLA defense, and uh, he hasn't disappointed. 54 yards on a touchdown run. Shorter runs, and then a nice move. Four touchdowns for the man delivering the pain. Well, there's uh, two others who have had four touchdowns in the Rose Bowl record book, and uh, 25 points is the Rose Bowl scoring record. Those others are Eric Ball of UCLA and Sam Cunningham of USC. Ron Dane now is in the book with him. So here's first down from the 21 for the Badgers, and Samuel keeps it. And throws it incomplete. Boy, he's lucky to get that one back. Todd McBride slapped it down. There's a little bit of perspective. Uh, team players against UCLA, Edger and James, the most recent. 299 yards. And moving up the bottom of the pile there is Ron Dane. 217 yards. He's got, well, he's got over a, over a quarter to play. Nick Aliotto still looking for something, some magic button to get his kids organized on defense. This is Dane. They get him this time. You got to get in the backfield. You've got to get to him before he gets cranked up. That motor gets running. He's going to damage him. Keith and Bob, I know you're talking about Ron Dane and 
how great he's been in this ball in this ball game. But number 37, Cecil Martin, who's just walking off the field right now, has to be given some of that credit. He has been devastating as a blocker through this ball game, annihilating the safeties as they try and come up to make tackles on Dane. Wonderful guy. Beloved by everybody in that locker room, spent a lot of time in the spare time going to visit kids in the hospital in the Wisconsin area. But he has been tremendous, Keith. Yeah, he's something. Four years ago. Flag down. Pass is completed to uh, Nick Davis up on the near sideline, but the flag is across the way. Holding. Oh, against UCLA. It's in the defensive secondary, and one of the DBs were probably holding one of the receivers. The catch by Davis is, uh, is good for the first down, and more yardage they'll take it where it lies at the 36-yard line. Now Wisconsin's got some real estate behind them. Time remaining in the third quarter now at 2.50. Dane. See, the first guy didn't wrap him. And he goes on and picks up a good six yards after the first contact. Kenyon Coleman was, had a hand on him. Nothing doing. Behind the defense, uh, right here is a true freshman. We've been talking about defensive lineman Coker, number 97. Look at the way he's getting blown out of there. Four, five, six yards downfield. You cannot do that. You got to hold your ground. And if anything, don't raise up and get pushed back. Hit the ground and, and make a pile up. Make him fall over you. Second down and two. Well, there's your first down. He just got down low, and uh, once he got under the pads, he was going to pick it up. Two teams. Which team will fulfill its destiny as the national champion? Who will take home the coveted Sears Trophy? Tennessee or Florida State? The Bowl Championship Series concludes Monday night at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on ABC Sports. Some well, they're measuring. Maybe I was a little early in the call, but it looked like he had it. Somehow, I don't think that game that you were just talking about That's will right. have the offensive firepower and the scoring that this one has had. Nope, I don't think so either, because those two defenses are capable, particularly Florida State's defense, capable of just smothering. And, and Tennessee has got a heck of a defense, but um, I don't think the offenses are going to be scoring a lot of points. Well, after being surprised by this one, I'm going to wait and see. I don't know. <laughs> Penalty. Referee threw it, and it's against Wisconsin. You talk about defense winning championships, and uh, quite frankly, I was surprised at how far UCLA went this year with a defense that was ranked 99th in the nation. Uh, but the offense has, 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 has won games for them, pulled out games at the end of the... But those two teams in the Fiesta Bowl, Tennessee and, and Florida State, both have championship defenses. Illegal procedure against Wisconsin. Backs them up five yards. First down and 15. The ball is on the 41-yard line with a minute and 25 seconds to play in the third quarter. And the Badgers are leading by three, 31 to 28 over the Bruins. This is Faulkner bouncing outside or trying to in a great play. Great play by number 48, Ali Abdul Aziz. He's made three or four good plays in this game tonight. Yes. So the Badgers now will be looking at uh, second down and still about 15. All nine attempts by Mike Samuel resulted in first downs. Passes away, and they say no, no catch. 
Did not have control going out of bounds. Chris Chambers. You go back to that ball the Chambers drop. He was wide open yeah. on his way for a touchdown. Single coverage. Uh, UCLA was uh, had a little run blitz going, which put single coverage in the secondary. He was open, just didn't get the ball to it. Third and 15 then. Davis will come to the near side. Chambers to the top. Merritt at the top. Bruins coming. Pick him up. Pass. Oh, threw it into coverage. Double coverage. The Chambers and it's incomplete. UCLA is a much better defense against the pass than they are against the run. Well, they had it for a while, and in the meantime, uh, the running backs got a rest. Dane got a rest. You've got a full quarter left, plus 27 seconds. And now here is Kevin Stimke, who's had a good night and a good season. And he owns that red chair in the players' lounge. The <laughs> recliner that goes to the special teams player of the week. Oh, it's a beauty of the There's a flag. Wisconsin ran right into him, didn't give him a chance to catch the ball. The man coming downfield didn't know where the ball was, Dante King. So they'll penalize him for that. UCLA is going to wind up with pretty good field position for this next possession. Kick catch, five yard penalty, no contact, first down. That's not a big uh, McNown night yet. But you know, it, it hasn't been all year, Keith. He's just, I mean, because they run the ball so well, they don't have to rely on him entirely. Yeah, they got, it, they've got great balance. Against Miami, what he threw for 513 yards yeah. and got beat. And he, it, but he does it when he has to. The three times he brought him from behind this year to win, they needed him, and he did it. This is Keith Brown. And Brown takes a pretty good lick from Donnell Thompson. Goes down after uh, almost no gain on the play. And that'll do it for the third quarter. 31 21, uh, 28. Badgers lead the Bruins. An ABC Sports presentation for the Rose Bowl. And the sun is almost gone. The shadows have, are gone. Uh, there's no problem with vision or anything now as the lights are on and we're playing a night game. Final quarter to go. 15 minutes. It's 31 to 28. Wisconsin leads UCLA. UCLA ball, second down and nine from the 26. Keith Brown is the deep back. Got it. Nope. Kept it outside. McNown gets acquainted with Tom Burke. Tom Burke, 6'4", 249, senior out of Poplar, Wisconsin, All-American, defensive end. Really haven't called his name nope, a lot today. Uh, he's, he's been active. He's been forcing McDowell to run out of the pocket. He forced him out of the pocket several times. He's the defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. Out of the shotgun, McNown. Gets it away, intercepted by Jamar Fletcher. He's got a convoy. Touchdown. Third touchdown off and pass interception this season. And his seventh on the year. Nobody was open. He kind of threw it up. Hoping his wide out could go down and make a play on the ball. It was underthrown, and Fletcher had no trouble with it. That's only the 11th interception of McNown this year. The extra point now from Matt Davenport. He's good. And 
it's back to 38-28. Wisconsin kick it off. 10 point lead again. 38 to 28. And 14.08. Jamar Fletcher. The interception and uh, the touchdown. Brzezetsky. This will be returned from the six by Rock. Penalty flag. Oh boy. It's almost these days inevitable that to push in the back. Here's Swanee. Well, Keith, on that last touchdown or interception for the touchdown, it was a great play by the defensive line. He's going to see Ross Kalaji, number 78. He gets pressure on Cade McNown and bumps him. He can't follow through on the ball. He is so accustomed to having receivers who can go up and make the play, he's going to give them the chance. But that time, he can't follow through. His receiver never has a chance to knock the ball down to prevent the interception. And Fletcher... Redshirt freshman comes up big, Keith. And UCLA just got hit with a holding call to back him up some more. Look at that. That's part of the foul stuff. Oh. That's severe damage, isn't it? All the way back inside the 10 yard line. But again, with this offense. Holy Dixon, however, remember, has had a hamstring pull and he's been very, very tender. And has not been called much today. Announced pass caught by Nelsby. And he hit the chalk over there about the 30 yard line, but it's first down, and the Bruins have some room. Hang on to your cushion, uh, Badger fans. Well, there's no question that they can score points, Keith. Uh, that interception was just a, a, a great play by the defensive line, forcing McNown and hitting him, and then uh, Jamar Fletcher, who leads the nation in, in interception. He only played nine games. He had six interceptions in nine games, and, and theoretically, that, that led the nation. This is Lewis, and Jermaine Lewis gets it out close to the 40. Nick Grayson. Made the tackle for Wisconsin, put it on the 39-yard line. Time remaining, 13 and a half minutes. Jamar Fletcher, we mentioned he had two interceptions uh, coming into the Rose Bowl. He's a redshirt freshman. He was a high school quarterback, an option quarterback. He also played defense, but he's got the knack at the cornerback position. Lewis goes into the stack. And, uh, big old number 99, Jake Sprague, reaches into the pile, finds, sorts it out, finds the running back, and lifts him up and lowers him with some authority. That was kind of funny. He was hung up on the backside of the stack, and Big Jake went in there and plucked him right out. <laughs> Again, he's going up against the number one scoring defense in the nation. These guys don't like to give up points. That's Deshaun Foster. And the penetration that time from Wendell Bryant, the freshman in the middle. And he got a piece of him before he got the line of scrimmage. But that second effort got the foot and a half they needed. And so they'll have another first down and four more snaps. Down's been pretty good in the fourth quarter. Some of the games have been blowouts, and he hasn't had to do anything. Uh, the other ones have been nail biters, and he's oh. had to come back and win. That Stanford game was the last second. Oregon, Oregon, Oregon State, State yep. Miami. Look at that pass. I mean, it just sizzled as it went in there, complete to Danny Farmer, and another first down. The dew is settling in now as we get into the evening hour. You're liable to have a paper trail on that thing pretty soon. <laughs> well, the Bruins are used to being in this position, if that's any consolation. And they're used to scoring a lot of points. Uh, 
Oh, they try to run that inside screen with Farmer, and there's nothing there. <laughs> what's, what's Bryant doing running out there with that making tackle on that guy? Oh, he's making a tackle. He's just very alert. He just sees the ball thrown out there and gets out there. That's a good play by the young freshman. See that Danny now owns that record. Breaking a record set by Kevin Jordan back in 1994. Second and a yard. Second and almost 11, I should say. Oh, that thing came spinning back a good 20 yards, so there must have been some damage when it hit. Fletcher and Melsby were tangled up. Fletcher defending. Fletcher was all over him, and this this uh, young uh, Jamar Fletcher is going to be around for another three years, causing havoc to uh, wide receivers in the Big Ten. Third down now, and long, almost 11 yards. Pretty good-sized play right here in the whole scheme of things. Passes away, and it is incomplete. Farmer was hit by Fletcher, and now you're yeah. going to get a flag from the back judge who came way across the field to throw that flag. And it looked like yeah. Fletcher got there early. Yeah, he did. He agreed. I'm just wondering why the side judge on this side didn't throw it. Melsby and Fletcher. They need about 10, 12 yards for a first down. It's zone coverage. It seemed just a little bit early. That was a, finally a good call by the official. Oh, no. Well, I mean, he threw it late. The guy over here didn't throw it. <laughs> so all he's looking at is this receiver over here. <laughs> Freddie Mitchell's in. They got a piece of McNow, and then they get him at the 40. There's a loss on the play of three. Second sack on McNow today. It'll roll out Kalaji and Adam off. Little blitz there that time. Uh, Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator, doesn't like to blitz a lot. But we'll do it occasionally. Trying to keep McNow inside the puck. Second down and 13 for the Bruins. Oh, trying to set up the screen and nothing doing. Number 36 came uh, up from the corner. Mike Eccles and dropped Jermaine Lewis. So there's going to be a loss of a yard on that play. And it'll be third. Uh, it'll be. Uh, what are they going to do? 14 yards. So third and 14. Now they'll go to the shotgun. And I make down a little more time. Wisconsin. Defensive penetration has been pronounced, and they got it again. That's a great open field tackle by Donnell Thompson. And it's fourth down, and the Bruins are going the wrong way. And they'll have to punt. Forty-four, Donnell Thompson sees the opening and makes a sure tackle. As a boy, he sold Cokes or whatever the soft drinks were in uh, Camp Randall Stadium. Lives very close to the stadium. Tim Rosga is the man waiting for the ball now back at the 10 yard line. His brother played for Rick Neuheisel over to Colorado. Oh, it's a fake. They throw. It is caught. And it is short of the first down. So Chris Saylor throws the ball to Ali Abdul Aziz. But he didn't have enough yardage to pick up the first down because of that succession of losses during the possession. 
So Wisconsin takes over the football. First down at their own 31-yard line with 8 minutes and 32 seconds to play, and they lead by 10. Wisconsin's defense stops UCLA at their 31-yard line. They take over now and hand it off to Ron Dane. Now is when they really need him. And he's got some fresh legs. He's had a goodly bit of rest off and on. There's your Tostitos game summary of what's happened so far as Dane has run for 228 yards, four touchdowns. Total offense, 481 yards. McNown, 333 yards, two touchdowns, and interception for a touchdown. Total offense, 531 yards. That's a Rose Bowl record for combined yardage for the two teams. And Wisconsin is up by 10 points. Uh, but uh, I don't think I don't think they feel safe yet. Jeez. Fumble. UCLA's got it. Bruins recover the fumble off the snap. I think the center, Rawbach. Tried to snap the ball because there was a defensive man coming up, maybe faking like he was going to blitz. Coker, 97, seems to be awful happy about it. He got it. He was right on it. Well, the ball was there. It just slipped out of his hands. It slipped out of uh, Samuel's hand, and Coker, the true freshman, who's had a tough day, gets the uh, first turnover for the Bruins. And it's on the 33-yard line of Wisconsin, first down. McNown's nature is to go for it, and he's doing that. And it is incomplete, and there's a penalty flag interference against uh, Jamar Fletcher trying to cover Danny Farmer. Jamar Fletcher is their best corner, and he always goes to the wide side. So he gets all the tough assignments. Teams like to throw wide to the wide side of the field. Farmer, their best wide receiver against Fletcher, the best cover guy. Looks like it's pretty good coverage. Let's see. Now he's got his arm, his left arm is chopped, chop blocked. Him, chopped him. Tell you In, what, you're out there by yourself against a team like UCLA. On that corner, you're gonna have a lot of tough plays. You didn't uh, he didn't give up a touchdown, that's the point. It's a 15-yard penalty for pass interference in college football. Of course, the size advantage, everybody talked about that all week long, but Farmer is 6'4", and on top of that, he's a great leaper. It was a good interview the other day, too. Wasn't he a nice kid? Just uh, oh, yeah. writes to say, I got no problems with those guys. I covered You mean Fletcher? Yeah, he was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed him a lot. So make it first down, UCLA at the Wisconsin 18-yard line now after the penalty. And this stumpy guy rocketing into the middle and to the 10-yard line. Jason Doring on the tackle. Again, that trap play up the middle with Myers, the offensive guard. Myers is right in here. He's going to make a little trap. And the guy that makes the play is the safety, the free safety, right up the middle. And Doring, number eight, what a sure tackler he is, Keith. Yep. Put his helmet right on his number. Second down and two. Lewis caught behind the line of scrimmage this time by Kologi. Big Ross Kologi, 275-pound sophomore from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. You look across that roster, look down where the big uglies roll around in the mud and the blood, and they're all Wisconsin, 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 Illinois, Ohio, and New York. And you know, they got a bunch of them back, too. They lose, they lose three starters off that defense. Third down and five after a three-yard loss. It's McNown time. No, nope, not this time. That one bounced. John Dubrovic 
was in the end zone, but the ball hit the ground a long way short of him. But Burke on that side, Keith, just kept containment, wouldn't let him get outside, so he couldn't get a good view of the uh, end zone. Good job of containing. Chris Saylor is into the game now. It's a 10-point lead, so they're going to need this sooner or later anyhow. I... And on the fourth down, they're going to go for the three points. And they're going to put the ball down just outside the 20-yard line. So it'll probably go down as a 30-yard field goal. Mm -hmm. Holds good. Kick is away. Kick is good. And so they pull within seven on a 30-yard field goal. That is good. 6.05 to play in the ball game. 38-31. Wisconsin. 38-31. The Rose Bowl now a little quiet. The moon is starting to peek up over the San Gabriels. The drama is set. Seven point difference in the ball game. High hanging kick by Chris Saylor. Back four yards deep in the end zone. No return on it by Davis. Courage tonight. Needs 16 yards to break Charles White. Rose Bowl record of 247, one that he set in 1980 against Ohio State. So there's all kinds of things going on here in the closing six minutes of this ball game. What Wisconsin needs most is what they're known for all year, and that is a ball-consuming drive, lots of plays, lots of first downs. Just take it down the field and keep the ball away from the other team. Second down and five. And again. Not quite the first down. Not quite. Tomorrow live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. ABC, the home of the Bowl Championship Series, presents the FedEx Orange Bowl. <coughs> Florida against Syracuse. The Gators and Orange men in a matchup for the first time in the uh, Orange Bowl in some 30 years. They're back at it again. It'll be down up in the McNabb. Boy, he can put on the show, can he? Last time Spurrier was in the Orange Bowl was when he was a senior as a player in 1967 Orange Bowl game. Yep. But, uh, uh, he didn't play for the Syracuse this time. Yeah, no, no, he didn't. Play. Samuel turns inside and gets a big first down for Wisconsin. The attendance for today's Rose Bowl game, the 85th edition, 93,872. That is a lesser crowd than we have had in most years recently. UCLA returned some between six and 7,000 tickets because there was such a huge letdown among their, quote, faithful after the Miami game. Everybody thought they were going to go play for the national championship. This is Dane. And Ron Dane getting big yardage on the first down. Ryan Neese brought him down. Here's 20. Well, Keith, Bob was talking about Wisconsin and its ability to possess the football. Their longest drive for a score came against UNLV this year. They went 92 yards in 12 plays, and they ate up 6 minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. So they are very capable of just moving it down the field and not giving UCLA another chance at a score. That's right. They're fully capable of doing exactly that. Or at least put them in a long range proposition. Samuel is caught behind the line of scrimmage. But he won't give up and goes ahead and picks up a yard. Instead of losing three, he picked up one. Santi Hall, number 95, had a hold of him and couldn't hold it. Ebenezer Scrooge would love this offense and this defense, this, this team. <laughs> I mean, they take the frugal approach. The, the defense is greedy, and the offense is miserly and stingy. <laughs> Can I borrow your writer? It's a big third down here. <laughs> it certainly is. 2.49, the clock ticking. Samuel keeping, turns, oh, no sir. Ryan Neese, number 47, put a pad on him and got him. And they'll have to punt it away. Yep. UCLA with two minutes and 30 seconds and running. The Bruins only have one timeout remaining. Wisconsin has two. It's a seven-point game, 38-31. There's a solid hit.
They need a big one from Stimke. They'll just let this clock run down, I assume. I would think so. Ten seconds coming up. Maybe snap it at five. Six. Five. There it goes. That's not the best of the night. Returnable. It's rock. And he gets back across the 45-yard line. That's great field position for Cade McNair. Certainly is. And so you've got a minute 42 to play in the game, a seven-point lead for Wisconsin. In the center, then Cade McNair, and what he's done this year, he's brought him back three times to tie or win ball games. He's got time. He throws incomplete. That's pretty good coverage over there by Jamar Fletcher. He got a hand on it and knocked it down. Intended for Brad Melsby. The Sugar Bowl is coming up next. Texas A&M, the Big 12 champion against Ohio State. The Big Ten co-champion down in Yolens in the Super Dome. Uh, the Nokia Sugar Bowl here on ABC Sports. Time ticking along. Coordinating producer of our game. College football on ABC, Tony Tortorisi. Today's game produced by Jay Ruthman, directed by Chip Dean. And it's second down and 10 for UCLA. Ball pops up in the air, but he gets it back. And the pass is complete at the 47-yard line of Wisconsin. I've never seen that. <laughs> in all the years I've been playing or watching, I've never seen that. Pass caught by Brad Meltsby. Good concentration by both McNown and Meltsby. It is third down and about three. Nope. He had his man over there. He was on the ground. Danny Farmer, the ball was thrown low. He had somebody at his feet. Somebody, a pass rush, a defensive lineman was at his feet, and he couldn't step forward into the throw. Therefore, it was short of Farmer. It wasn't Melsby. Anyway, right side of your screen, that's, that's Burke. That's Burke that was in there at his feet. Fourth and three. 107 to play. It's going to be McNown. There's nobody behind him. He pumps it, and he's hit. And put down behind the line of scrimmage by Wendell Bryant, number 77. <laughs> Wendell Bryant, 290-pound freshman out of St. Louis, Missouri. We came in talking about Favre and Burke, the defensive ends, and it's been Bryant, number 77, in the center of that defensive line that's caused all the havoc. Number 77, a true freshman. Wow. Barry said earlier in the year that this kid was really going to be good. He wasn't starting. They rotate him in there. So all they have to do is protect the football for 59 seconds. UCLA has only one timeout remaining. Let me uh, continue to give some credit to those who have made this work possible tonight. Associate producer Margaret Schaefer, associate director Derek Mobley. Assistance to the producer Chapman Downs, Braben Martin. Braben wore a tie today, which was astounding. Production <laughs> manager Amy Hussey. Tech Ops, Kathy Skinsky, our statistician, Mark Amento, our spotter, Malibu, Kelly Hayes, our URL. Computer stats, Greg Rothberg. College Football Today, produced by Charles Kaplan. College Football Today, directed by Calvin Haywood. And Mike Samuel takes a snap, puts a knee down. And the clock is running. The Bruins can only stop it one time, which they do right now. And around the big old bowl, the lights from the flash bulbs and the cameras flashing and flashing. It'll be uh, the two teams as they have rolled up over a thousand yards in offense. They've scored uh, 69 points in the ball game. Cade McNown, uh, who has torn up the UCLA record book, is four years. He, he's not going to win this game. Those guys are the guys in red from the scruffy little coal mine in town in Pennsylvania. Barry Alvarez has walked and walked and talked and played and fought 
He came from Burgettstown, PA. He loves to go back and drink beer with his buddies. He's welcomed as one of theirs. And now the game is five seconds from being over, and the Wisconsin Badgers have defeated the UCLA Bruins by a score of 38 to 31. Stay tuned for the Nokia Sugar Bowl, where Ohio State plays Texas A&M. Good night from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena.